Hey everybody. Now I'm trying to get back into Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. This is part two. I think um I'll say the chapter we were on was Lizzie or something like that. What chapters are there? Jeremy, Wendy, we did Wendy, we did Frank, yep, okay, so we're at Lizzie. So we got, after that we got Steven and Kate, that's it. So we were at, um, I think, Lizzie's campground, or holiday camp, as they call it. Hey, that's not bad. That's sure as heck better than I can do. Huh? Perspective's a little different, so the painting's a little different. Good. No one kick it out of kick it out of the house. So I don't know how well you all can hear the background noises, but in my stereo headset I can hear like a little bit of laughter, people playing, people talking. And it's crazy. Creepy, because there is no one here. Everybody is somehow gone. Oh, all right. Di, whatever's wrong, you look terrible. Mrs. Graves, Sean's baby Dylan, is he all right? He's fine. Di, come on. It's okay. Let's get you a cup of tea. Mrs. Graves, I need to tell you. Leave it, Di. Do you try and get out of the valley? All the roads are shut down. I know. I was driving really fast, but. The other car was on the wrong side of the road, and... Oh, God, I think Die, he... for fuck's sake, leave it! It's all right. Hey, you're all right. Sean's all right, baby Dylan's all right. That is what matters. Everyone's all right. <laughs> but... No. Now, I need your help. Some of the children, they're getting quite frightened. So, Rachel and I, we decided to push forward the show, keep them occupied. You said the other night you play piano. Can you help with that? Yes, yes, I suppose so, but Mr. Graves, Rob... Can look after himself. He's a big boy now. Don't worry. Just head to the hall and find Rachel. She'll tell you what needs practicing. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Graves. Yeah, thank Sean. You. Go and find Reese, please, see if he needs some help. Yeah, of course. Go on. your run-of-the-mill camper.
Let's see where we are. This is a public service announcement from Haverton District Council Emergency Measures Committee. Road and rail closures are being implemented to help contain the outbreak of influenza. Please remain calm and indoors. Just the calling influenza. Teachers, scoutmasters, and members of the clergy will act as your representatives during this period. Be sure to report any symptoms of illness. Far out can we go? Oh, that's it. A yeah, neat little beach. Rocky. I don't know if I'd go want to go swimming here. I mean, put your bare feet on these rocks. Slice your foot open. I know there's gonna be a little story here. It's gotta be. You don't think she's gone to look for Mr. Graves, do you? I think Lizzie knows Robert will turn up when he's sober. It'll be all right. Do you want me to go and look for her? No, it's okay. Come on, I promised the kids another shot the last number than I promised everyone a cup of tea. You're very like her, you know. Like Lizzie. Me? No, I'm not. First chance I get, I'm out of here. It's Kate. Elizabeth? Lizzie. I've heard a lot about you. It's good, you know, you and Emma, it's not difficult or anything. Should it be? I'm sorry? You said it wasn't difficult. I don't see why it would be difficult. You and Stephen were together a long time ago. He moved away. It certainly isn't difficult for me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Or... Well, I'm not offended. Listen, Elizabeth. But Lizzie, please. <laughs> Lizzie. Right. You seem like an okay type of person. And I'm not trying to be rude, I promise. But let's try and be realistic here, huh? 
Let's, um, try and do our best. It's a British thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I suppose it is. We'll do our best, then. It's kind of a an issue as well. found another dead bird over at the swimming pool. That's the fourth one this morning. Did you fish it out? Yeah. Did you get a chance to think about that pay rise? Oh, I'm sorry, Reese. I've been a little bit busy. Oh, Rachel. Oh, sorry I'm late, Mrs. Graves. I was packing away the tennis thing. Did you check Mr. Cole Shelley again like I asked you to? He's not back yet. I haven't seen him either. Do you think he went into town? Maybe. Yeah, something oh, like Reese, that. The dentists were booked in for a 4.30 tennis session, but they didn't show up. So I went to their chalet. You know, they always take the one near the campfire, but they weren't there either. I think maybe they went into the village for a hoover bag and might have given Mr. Cole a lift. A hoover bag? Why on earth would they do that? Well, I think maybe Mrs. Denton was hoovering and the bag broke, so they had to get another one. Because there's this dust all over their chalet. All holiday makers to the main hall, please. All holiday makers to the main hall. Regiment. Yeah, before I do that, I just want to. See if there's there's all these places. I just want to make sure that uh, don't miss anything. So changing room. Let me get that. Oh, I can manage. Is your hip giving you grief today? Always gives me grief. And I managed for the last ten years, so you're a little late for the night in shining armor routine. Suit yourself, I'm only trying to help. God damn it, Stephen. I'm not some useless, sappy girl that you can just string along forever. Look around you. I made all of this. 
I built it on my own when everyone else had written me off as some poor little cripple. You know that's not how I see you. Well, you weren't there, were you? No. You'd given up on me long before the accident. What do you want from me, Lizzie? I love you. I'll do anything. Anything except okay? I thought not. I love you too, but sometimes I think you just say what you think everyone else wants to hear. Mm. Lizzie seems to be getting smart. Sleeping baby, darling child, clouds and starlight, starlight, starlight. When you wake, you will be mine. Starlight, sleep and love. Sleeping baby, shadow dust, clouds and starlight. Numbered starlight. When we're called to go, we must into starlight. Sleep.
to remember back the way we came. Pretty. This game is very pretty. For as, as basic as it is, it doesn't require a lot of, you know, a lot of NPC graphics and things like that. Just that little dancing light, and it seems like a lot of little story cutscenes, which are still in their own way beautiful. This is so good. I'm glad this was requested. This is this is a very well made game. Still trying to piece together the storyline, though. I mean, I get the relationships, but I don't understand like what happened. All right, Stephen. I I misspelled his name for the title of this this stream, but um, I don't like him. There's data coming through faster than I can encode it. I've already lost two processors. They keep burning out. Please, I love you. You need to get out of there. It's not safe. I need you, Stephen. I need you here. I can open the gate manually. I can let you in. It's too dangerous. You don't understand what's happening. No, here. you don't understand. We can solve this. We can find a way. I just need more power. I need to amplify the signal, and I can't do it on my own. You saw the opportunity. You ran the numbers, remember? We're responsible for all this. You and me. <laughs> it's not just you and me anymore, though, is it? Jesus, Kate, you're trying to talk to her, aren't you? Kate, you can't. Stephen, I have to. It. What is it? Question of the day. What is it? I mean, that's, that's just gorgeous. Trees, the flowers. Oh yeah, buddy, we're coming. We not supposed to be going this way. Did, did I miss something? Usually those lights kind of are your guide, but. I might miss something, I guess. Huh. Alright, buddy, what you doing? So, uh...
All right, well, I'm going to go this way. It's completely dead. It won't start. It's only a short walk to the camp. I think we should split up. You go and fetch Rachel. I'll go back to the village and find Evie. I don't think we should split up. I don't want to either, Charlie, but we've got to. I'll meet you back at my house later on, OK? We can talk properly then. Why won't you tell me what happened? No, no, actually, you should stay at the camp tonight. Come and find me in the morning. Bring Rachel back. She's going to need her mother. Meg. Just take care of her. Meg! What is it, Charlie? Nothing. Just be careful. I will, I promise. You as well. I'll see you later on. The voice acting of this is amazing. Alright, so I think we're back in town. Shropshire. Where are we? We are... Okay, we are up there. Near Lakeside. Lots of dead birds. They're just falling out of the sky. Still, it doesn't really explain why. I do, I love this kind of storytelling where it's, it's kind of broken, you're getting bits and pieces, it just keeps you locked in. Do you think she'll like it? 
It's in an awful state, Stephen. I don't It'll think It'll be an so. adventure. It'll mean putting down roots here, maybe a family. Are you sure she wants children? What, to stay here? It's not her place, you know. Don't start that again, please. I mean, she's ambitious, love, and she's well older. She's not going to want to stay cooped up at home looking after the kids. Is that how you felt about me? Oh, stop it, Stephen. That's not what I meant, and you know it. I'm just saying you should make a choice. If it's a family you want, well, you know how much Lizzie wants a family. Jesus, Mum, I didn't come here for marriage guidance. I just asked what you thought about a fucking house. Stephen, Appleton language. Sorry, it's just that you have to understand. Kate is the most brilliant, extraordinary, wonderful person I've ever known. She's, she's like no one else. The way she looks at things. It's like she has whole worlds inside her head. I don't think you or anyone really understands that. Physical changes are evident. Although the butterfly burn is now faded, I can clearly see the change in my pores up close. As I record these words, I can feel myself hearing them as if for the first time, as if I'm both speaker and listener simultaneously. I am a scientist. I can only deal with the evidence I have. And this points in one simple direction. It's not in the observatory. Authorize the use of VX gas on the town. It 
Feels like I've been here before already. Cuz I have. Oh. <laughs> you look well. I don't. <laughs> but thank you. You do. How are you settling in? Nothing changes around here. I mean, it's great to be back. It still feels like home, I suppose. In a funny kind of way. It's been a long time, Stephen. Last time you saw me, I could still walk properly. You look pretty good to me. Stop it. For what it's worth, I'm sorry about how things worked out. Or didn't. Or didn't, right. Do you think you made a mistake leaving? My mum tells me it's never too late to change things. To put things right. Funny. It's just what she said to me the other day. I have been wondering what she oh, meant God, by that. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, maybe I should go. Why? Stephen, we're both married. I don't think this is a good idea. What isn't? We're just two old friends having a drink, that's all. Jar. Jeez, look at all the dead birds everywhere. Hey, Domino. My dog has entered the room. Stephen, I don't know if you'll ever listen to this. Uh, maybe you've decided to stay with Kate, and I, I can't blame you for that. But I can't wait for you either. I've got to think about the baby. And, oh. Well, I should have left a long time ago. I've run out of excuses for not leaving now. But I do love you, Stephen. And I hope you find peace one way or another. Oh, there's planes coming. Oh, uh, what the hell? No.
That dick. Repeating over and over to myself in the dark, eating cold food from a can with my fingers. My name is Catherine Collins. I am Catherine Collins. As if I can force the world to acknowledge my existence. Time has ceased to exist in any real terms. I'm reduced to marking off the days on the walls. Like a cave woman. Master's house, Howard Lantham speaking. Howard, it's Clive, Clive Smith. I need you to listen to me and not ask questions or interrupt. Can you do that? Yeah, I can. But why are you calling? The Emergency Measures Committee is imposing a quarantine around the valley. We've got an influenza outbreak in the village. We're suspending rail services and we're also going to be shutting down the roads for a bit. Uh, you're going to be dealing with some anxious people, Howard, so you need to explain it's all under control and we'll be back to normal in a few days. All right. Open up the emergency store. There's posters and boards along with a bunch of stuff that hasn't been used since the war. Grab anything you think might be useful. I need you to close up any unoccupied buildings, put posters up, that sort of thing. Make sure everything is all squared away in ship shape. You are a military man, I'm sure you understand that. Everyone doing their bit, following their orders. All right? All right? I think. Good man. I knew we could count on you. Ooh. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, neat. Hmm. 
the hell you're going to be able to see out of that window, but... Let's go check out a pair of binoculars. Yeah, he... He's well and dead. I think we're still in the Steven. leave. You don't understand. You can't be near me. Painting these stupid little pictures. Stealing food. You always were a little prick. Please, every second we're in proximity makes it worse. I'm a primary conduit. You're a fucking disgrace. Come here. Don't touch me. Get off. What's going on? Come in here. Lord, get off. over Sam? us. Thinking you're so much better Sam, than the rest No physical you contact. You stupid fucking missus. She's better than any of you. <laughs> Sam? Meg, please. Don't, don't come near me. Meg! Charlie! Meg! Meg, wait! Don't touch me! Meg, please, you have to understand, it was an accident! Get off her! Let go, let's just go! Charlie, you have to understand, it was an accident! Let's just leave him, leave him! What have you done, Appleton, you bastard? Come on, Charlie, let's Meg, just get Charlie, out of here! Meg, Charlie, please! the other thing about it, like, VX doesn't do... doesn't, like, dissolve body or dissolve matter. So where is everybody?
You're a daft old bird walking all the way out here for it. You know Charlie would have dropped it off. What? And have that stinking great lorry of his poisoning my birds? He shouldn't be driving it on these lanes. It's a hazard. I think he was hoping he could have a word with you about Frank. There's nothing to say. Oh, listen, Wendy, they might all be scared of you, but that's not going to work with me. You're 68 years old. Grow up. Talk to Frank. How dare you speak to me like that? Give me my bird feeder right now. Promise me you'll drop by and see your brother. Megan Holloway, give Not a chance. Promise me. It's for your own good, and you know it. You are a shamelessly manipulative and difficult woman. It's no wonder Charlie adores you so much. No wonder I do what? No wonder you never finish what you start. I thought I told you to check the incoming stock orders. Wendy, one bird feeder for you. I'll tell Frank you'll stop by. Oh! Charlie, stop mooning around and stick the kettle on. Make yourself useful. This is Catherine Collins, recording for posterity. It's all over. I don't know how long I've got. Whatever he did, whatever the planes were carrying, it's burning my lungs. Probably some kind of nerve agent. I suspect it's only exposure to the pattern that has kept me alive this long. I'm making my way to Tower 6. I'm going to fuse the signals from the optical array. I just... can make it. anyone there? Can anyone hear me? Clive. Clive, it's Stephen Appleton. Are you there? Can you hear me? Over. Come on, Clive. Where are you? Damn it. Kate. Kate, it's Stephen. Come in, Tower 6. Kate, are you there? Kate. Anyone? Hello. Can anyone hear me? This is Dr. Stephen Appleton, broadcasting from within the quarantine zone. Can anybody hear me? Oh, my...
Jesus, man, what do you dent your face? It's nothing. You collecting feed? Looks like the supplies haven't been coming in. Huh. Again? These phones are all strange. I can't pinpoint the logic of transmission. You what? What are you doing with that paint? It means the EMC are actually moving at the proper speed. Listen, Frank. Have you uh, heard anything on the radio about a flu outbreak? Doesn't seem much like flu to me. They're shutting down access to the valley to try and isolate it. No. Something about the phones. I can't put my finger on it quite yet. What are you talking about? Hey, I'm still talking to you. Where are you going? You knew what you were getting into. Really? Well, I'm sorry we don't measure up to your exacting standards, Dr. Collins. Maybe you just need to give us ordinary humans a break. What? Ordinary humans like Lizzie Graves? Did you really think that I wouldn't find out? Frank told me. Or did you forget there's one person in this shithole who actually talks to me? Kate, it was just a dream. Don't bother, Stephen. Oh, for Christ's sake. Kate, slow down. You were engaged to her, Stephen. You nearly married oh, her. Oh, come on, it was just a drink. Then why the hell did you lie to me about because it? Because I knew you'd be mad and then it would end up in a row. You wanted to focus on the event tonight. Oh, so you were actually doing me a favor. Wow, I guess I just forgot to say thank you. Do not treat me like I'm an idiot. You're overreacting. I know, I know you're stressed. Just don't. Come on, this is crazy! Pressure in my eyes again. I can't move my legs, can't feel my face. When I collapsed, the light was waiting for me there. Caught me, lowered me here. Now it's pooling around my feet, watching me. The printers are spewing out page after page of zeros. It's frightened too. It'll be okay.
It's okay. I can help you. We can be together now. Ten seconds to signal fusion. We can be together. Three seconds. When I was a kid, my dad found a fox. It had been hit by a car and couldn't walk anymore. My mum went spare, of course. Made him keep it in the shed. He was already slipping away from us then. He spent hours with that fox, telling it all about Italy and the villages they bombed there. I was... I was jealous, I think. But the fox got more of my dad than I did. But it was dying, that was clear. So one day, I snuck out, took it a sandwich for food. I was only eight. When it bit me, I remember the anger, the shock, the hurt. Running in, screaming from the garden, my mum panicking about rabies. My dad beat it to death with a spade. I found him crying. I done a Ken, son. That's what he said. I done a Ken, it was hurting you. That's just a poor, dumb, dying animal. It doesn't know it's hurting us. Christ help us, it's left the valley. It's everywhere now. It's been three hours since the planes went over. I haven't been able to reach anyone on the shortwave. I'm beginning to think I may have made a terrible miscalculation. everyone I've ever loved from me. You've made me do things I never even thought I was capable of. But if you think I'm coming with you... Kate? Wait. Stop. Kate.
This is Catherine Collins. I don't know if anyone will ever hear this. It's all over. I'm the only one left. plane, Stephen leaned across me and pointed out of the window. Down there, he said. That's home. But all I saw were patches of color. I don't think until this moment that I understood that one could contain the other so completely. Lizzie tried to leave with her child and why it was wrong to stop her. I try and explain that much of what it did was wrong. It shows me Stephen and Lizzie together. And I'm happy for them. Frank walks his fields with Mary. Wendy and Edward nest together in the orchards of their love. Jeremy lies at peace with his God at last. All of them are happy because they are together. I understand it better now. It is a collector of time. No butterflies. I watched a butterfly dancing in a strip of sunlight. All of its life contained in a single day. The blink of an eye between the ebb of the darkening tide. Lying there with the pattern curled around me, I saw the inevitability, the necessity of presence born from absence, the constant unfolding.
watched the pattern lean in and time slow to almost nothing. I saw the flame leap from Steven's hand and the moment hang in the air forever. I watched his face. And in the last second, I almost believe he saw me. He wasn't frightened or angry. I remember his expression, just like I remember it from the first time. Early that morning when he woke and still half sleeping said, And I loved him as he entered the fire. And I let him go. Knowing I wasn't ready to join him. Hmm. We have held time to ourselves here in this place. Held the light to the ground because we were afraid of the coming dark. But now we understand that to cling to the light is not living. I spent my life watching the illumination from a million dead stars reaching for me without grasping this meaning. The light we cast transcends our death. The pattern made by our living creates a bridge across the dark. <laughs> oh gosh, excuse me. Anything else over here? Is that pretty much it? That was pretty much it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna sit forward because I'm starting to get sleepy. Kate was nuts. Look at all this stuff. from the shadow of the tower, across the observatory, over the valley, and consumes the world. Everything is light now. Everything has come to rest. The world is scored by the traces we carved into it. Our presence is everywhere, the bridge joining our stories. This world existed before we came to it, and it will continue without us. In the empty fields and houses, our traces radiate, and others will come to dance in the light we cast. We can slip away gently, unafraid, knowing that everything will continue. Just in concept.
The end is coming now. I'm not afraid. We have each other. We lived apart from them. We understand now our failure to touch, to belong. But it doesn't matter anymore. Everybody is gone. And we will join them. We are born apart. Driftwood on the banks of an endless dark ocean, and we will be carried away by the swell soon enough. But in between, in the single day of living, that dancing in a strip of sunlight, we can find what we miss. The love that makes us whole. The imminence. Everybody found their other. This pattern is mine. everybody's gone to the rapture um, interesting lots of uh, unanswered questions music, music is definitely um, well picked very haunting This music is absolutely gorgeous. I love a cappella choir kind of music. dynamics change I could sit here I'm, I am going to sit and listen to the rest of this song that was a gorgeous piece of work uh, piece of music um so yeah, that's a, that's everybody's gone to the rapture. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I think I'm going to take a quick break, maybe go to the bathroom, um, get a little bit more water, and come back, and we might play some uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World just to end the night. So um, enjoy the evening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>